Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, we're gonna look at Commodore 64s and how we can improve the video quality. Let's get right to it. So one of the things that makes Commodore 64s great is their great graphics capabilities, especially compared to its contemporaries in 1982 when the machine was released. When Commodore released the 64, they did something that's pretty nice and they included the RF modulator on board, but they also included a video port that allowed you to plug in an external composite monitor or on all Commodore 64s starting with this board revision and onwards, you could hook up a monitor with chroma and luma signals. That's the equivalent of S-Video before S-Video was even a standard thing. The Atari 8-bit line of computers also had the capability of displaying this Chroma Luma signal as well, although with some of those machines you do have to modify the motherboard to just route these signals to the connector. This is the video chip on the Commodore 64, it's called the VIC-2. It does all the graphics processing, and it outputs an analog Luma and Chroma signal. Luma contains the brightness, basically a black and white television signal, along with all the sync signals, while the chroma that comes out of here is the color information. When you combine those together into a single composite video signal, which is what you would get when you output from the RF modulator or just over the single yellow wire to a monitor, the color information, especially with NTSC, interferes a little bit with the brightness information, and that gives you things like dot crawl and other artifacts in the signal. This is a side effect of the fact that NTSC video was designed as a black and white television signal and color was added later. So the way the color was added in was a bit of a hack and that introduced those artifacts. The only way to really avoid that is to run the color signal to your monitor separately than the brightness information and that way you get the clearest possible picture. Most other devices that were available at the time of the Commodore 64 had a native composite video signal. So take the Nintendo Entertainment System as an example its video chip only outputs a single composite pin. So there's no way to get that clearer Luma, Chroma, or S-Video output from that console. Now it's not all roses when it comes to output video quality on the 64. There's a few things that hinder the video quality and create differences from one machine to another, and I wanna address those in this video. Okay, let's start with this Commodore 64 longboard here. This is one that I've done a repair on previously because I could tell these sockets are ones that I have installed. But I did write good on here, so this should be working. I have this plugged in through my RetroTink 2X, through the S-Video connection. Power supply's hooked up, let's turn this on. Now, fortunately, because I don't have a capture device, I'm gonna be shooting the LCD screen directly with my camera. But due to interactions between the pixel layout of the screen and the camera sensor, there's gonna be a little bit of moray patterns, which might be represented in this footage by these curving lines that go through the screen. Those are not visible to the human eye whatsoever, but there are other artifacts in this video signal that absolutely are. So right off the bat, even though this signal is through S-Video, some of this is just not very clear. See the G-J-H-J-H-J-H, this is in a brown color. It's very smeared, it's hard to read. There's also a little bit of color fringing around the white text, around the green text, and there are also what are called jail bars in this video signal, which are these vertical lines that run the entire length of the picture. Overall, everything is just rather soft, to be honest, as well. Far softer than S-Video has a right to be. The NTSC VIC-2 chip comes in at least three variations. They're all gonna be MOS 6567, but then there's an R, and it's the numbers after that that determine the version of the chip. This is one of the older R56A chips. This is typically found in the very early Commodore 64s from 1982. Sometimes the chips are in ceramic casing that's purple color just like this, and other times they're gonna be black like these chips right here. Of course, the same size as the VIC-2. I have some other examples of the MOS VIC-2 as well. This is a 6567, but an R8 version. It's from 1984. This ceramic chip is also an R8 chip from 1983. The earlier chips seem to be mostly ceramic. And this is one of the later chips. This is a 6567 R9 from around 1986. But I broke out all these chips so I can do a quick comparison to see which one actually looks the best. I also want to check to see if there's any difference in these vertical lines from one chip to another. I also want to say that it is my opinion that this particular motherboard revision, the one that is 25407, has the worst video quality of all of the boards. It has the most soft, fuzzy video output overall. 
I've mentioned many times that the later revisions that have the VIC-2 chip turned 90 degrees and they eliminate these extra chips and they put a single 8701 or 7701 clock generator, those have sharper video output. Also, the C64 short boards, the ones that you might find in 64Cs, they have a much reduced chipset count to this. Those have a sharp video output that match the later revision of the long boards. But I've also found that the earliest C64 boards, the one that only have five pin video output, they lack the Luma Chroma output on this connector. Those have pretty sharp output as well. But because you're limited to composite video, you're not gonna get that high quality S-video picture that you'll get on the later ones. So for comparing sharpness, I'm going to stick to the Easy Flash launch screen here. There's a lot of softness around the text that are in the menus here. And overall, even though we're on an LCD, this just looks really soft. And then for checking on jail bars, I'm gonna use this game. It's a 1K game called Pixel Pusher. Actually kind of a rather fun game, but the dark gray background really shows off those jail bars. These vertical lines you see in the dark gray are what everyone talks about when they mention jail bars on a C64. The general consensus comes from the fact that the VIC-2 chip is strictly not just a video chip, and it generates quite a bit of the signaling on the C64 motherboard. And that presents itself as these lines that you see here. All right, I've locked the exposure, and let's run through all of these different VIC chip versions to see if there's any difference when it comes to the jail bars. Also, take note of these little dots that are within this black area here. They look to be green and orange, but let's see if those look different from one revision of the chip to another. Okay, next up we have the Ceramic 6567R8. And I'd say the jail bars look pretty much the same to me. The pixels here look roughly the same. There's definitely some issues around the blue to gray transition up here, but I'm not really sure if that is different than on the last chip. I'll have to look back in the video footage. Next we have a 6567R8, but one of the plastic black colored chips. And this looks, it looks identical to the Ceramic one. And finally, the 6567R9. I'm not really seeing any kind of differences. Similar jail bars. The dot pattern is fuzzy. The blue to gray transition looks the same. So ultimately, I'm not seeing any real difference between any of the versions, at least with this screen. This is the 6567R9. I don't see any color fringing around any of the texts. Everything looks really good in that respect. It is very soft though, but I don't, that's not the fault of the VIC-2. That's gonna be the fault of this particular 64 board revision and the RF modulator. But yeah, overall looks fine. This is the 6567R8. This is the plastic black color chip. And again, looks totally fine. There are some slight gel bars visible, but typically gel bars are worse on the darker colors like this blue right here or that dark gray on the pixel pusher game. This is the 6567R8, but the ceramic version, and it pretty much looks the same as the R8 plastic version and the R9. Finally, we have the R56A. I'd say from a sharpness perspective, it's pretty much the same. Maybe it's ever so slightly sharper, but I'm not quite sure about that. I, I think the biggest difference to me is that it's less color saturated than the other three chips. Now we have my ZIF 64 board. Same revision as the last one we were just testing with, but you might notice right off the bat, some things are different on this. I went ahead and desoldered the RF modulator so we can do some additional testing. In place of the original RF modulator, I've temporarily installed this little amplifier board. I actually don't know where this came from. I think I bought a Commodore 64 once. It came with some additional parts, and this was in the bag. The back of the board here says VIC-2 amplifier bypass, I have no idea where this board came from. When I Google for it, I can't really find any information. So if you know about this particular board, put it in the comment section below and let me know what this is. But looking at the top, it was kind of obvious the way it hooked up. There was five volts ground, which was oddly marked as minus five volts. And then there was the Chroma Luma input from the VIC-2. And then on the output, there was the Chroma Luma output for the S-Video, but also composite output which is what the RF modulator does do. It combines those signals together to create a composite signal. This particular board has, looks like four transistors on it. And because of that, it needs five volts to run. So I ran the five volt line down to this capacitor. The capacitor's five volts was actually coming from this particular five volt linear regulator, which is probably the cleanest power available on my C64. Most likely it's cleaner than the five volts coming in off this, because this is hooked up to a switching power supply on the other end of this cable. It's one of my homemade power supplies. 
Now under the VIC-2 chip on this motherboard, you have what's called a LumaFix board. These boards were designed to help counteract the jail bars, those vertical lines on the video signal. From my understanding, these work by using a 74LS logic chip here to actually generate an interference pattern that then you tweak with these little potentiometers to basically negate or counteract the built-in vertical line pattern on the VIC-2 chip. Personally, I could never get this adjusted in a way that made it look better than the original video output. Yes, it would look different. Like for instance, it might minimize the lines on a particular dark gray color, but it would actually exacerbate them in other areas. So in the end, I feel that it's not worth using one of these. Now this particular board is actually disabled. So the chip is missing. So without that, it's not gonna do anything. But I've actually cut a couple traces on the bottom as well. And you see these two wires that come out from under the board. This is actually the chroma and the luma signal that comes directly off the VIC-2 chip. When I have the VIC-2 plugged into this adapter board, it's no longer sending those signals into the motherboard. And of course, the question you are surely going to have is why the hell did I do this? I ran these wires and I connected them directly up to this amplifier board. On this particular motherboard design, the chroma luma video signals go down onto the motherboard and then make their way over to the area where the RF modulator is. It passes by this clock generator circuitry here. I had read on the internet somewhere, and unfortunately I can't remember where it was, that this circuitry here actually generates some interference that is picked up by the luma signal on the RF modulator, causing some exacerbation of those vertical lines. Well, I can tell you on this particular motherboard revision, bypassing the chroma luma traces on the motherboard and running them externally have no effect on the jail bars whatsoever. So I'm gonna reconnect my little amp board directly to the pins here, which is the chroma luma output from the motherboard traces. And I'm gonna remove this luma fix board, plug the VIC-2 directly back into the motherboard. So we get back to the way it would be on your 64 if you had this revision. Incidentally, the way I hooked up this bypass is it's gonna be hard to see on this camera, but I cut the traces that run from pin 14 and 15. That's the Luma and the Chroma signals. I ran it out these jumper wires and it's no longer hooked up to these pins that go through onto the motherboard or any of these other passives over here that are for the Luma fix board. And there we go, I've hooked the Luma and Chroma back up to these two pins here, which feed this little amp board. All right, time for some video quality testing. Let's pop in the R9 here. We'll start with the newest chip. And wow, I'm really blown away. Immediately, even with the text here, it's so much sharper than it was with the original RF modulator in place. Now I've gone ahead and typed out the same JKH pattern with all 16 colors of the 64. And right off the bat, it's amazing. The difference is shocking. The clarity and sharpness is immediately apparent and it's not perfect. I mean, the brown color is still a little smeary and the red is as well, but it seems to be much better than it was. Let's do a comparison to that first shot. And here we are at the Easy Flash 3 menu. And again, the sharpness improvement is unbelievable. It's of course an analog video signal going through an up converter, so it's not going to be perfect. But just the fact that the pixels are so much clearer and the space between the two pixels, like in the word club here, between the L and the U, you can very clearly make out those are yellow pixels in there. It is just super sharp. And along the edge here, it's also very sharp. Just everything has a very clear, nice sharpness to it. This is the 6567R9. Let's quickly run through all the different VIC chips and we'll compare those and see if there's any differences. This is the 6567R8, the black plastic version, and it pretty much looks exactly the same to me. I can't really tell the difference. And here's the R8 ceramic variant of the VIC-2 and it also looks pretty much the same to me. There is very slight color fringing around the letters, but that was actually apparent on the R8 plastic version and the R9. I didn't mention it, but it looks about the same. Hopefully it's coming across in the camera, but there is some jail bar in this light gray color, and that was the same on the R8 plastic and the R9 version. There's one thing with the R8 ceramic that I noticed. It seems like the color saturation is slightly more, and I personally prefer that actually over the very muted tones of the 64. That's my personal preference, but at least it seems like to me this is slightly more saturated. 
And finally, we have the 6567R56A, the earliest VIC-2 chip there is. And this one looks pretty bad. There are a lot of vertical lines all throughout the picture. There is noticeable color fringing around all of the text. These artifacts are less evident when you use this R56A chip on this motherboard revision with the stock RF modulator. But if you use this chip on the later revision motherboards that have native sharper video output, you will see those same lines. Also on the earliest 64s, those have generally sharper output. You'll also see those vertical lines on this chip. Now I wanna try one thing. I'm gonna unplug the chroma signal from the S-Video connection, which will make this black and white. And the lines might be showing up more clearly, these vertical lines in this chip. And hopefully the Mori patterns on my camera aren't so bad that it's not clear these vertical lines. All right, we're back at Pixel Pusher. Hopefully I have a similar camera angle of the first time around. We are currently running the R56A chip. And in the light gray color, I don't really see those vertical lines, the ones we saw on the color image, but I do see the regular jail bar lines. They're a bit further spaced apart. Doesn't look so great. Here we're looking at the R8 ceramic version, similar jail bars, there's really no difference. They maybe are slightly more muted than on that other chip, and everything else is looking very similar, very sharp all around here. Here we're looking at the R8 plastic version, and it looks pretty much the same to me. I don't notice any difference between this one and the ceramic version. And here we're looking at the R9, which looks pretty much identical to the R8 uh, ceramic and plastic versions. And here's the multi-easy menu on my Easy Flash 3. This is with the RF modulator removed. The text is incredibly sharp. The single pixels like on the W right here look really clear and visible. And overall the colors up here are not smeared. It just looks pretty much the best I've ever seen any Commodore 64 looking. And here's the multi-easy menu on my Easy Flash 3 with the RF modulator installed. And we're using an R8 chip and things are definitely soft. The single pixel on the W is almost faded out, and along the yellow to black transitions here, it's just very smeared, especially these single pixels around the A, and the red is just not clearly defined on the vertical risers on the letters. Overall, it's just soft. It also looks a little bit dark. All right, conclusion time. So for this revision of C64 motherboard, the biggest thing that improved the video quality was definitely me removing and bypassing the RF modulator, but you can't just remove it and add some jumper wires. This is an active circuit in here that actually creates the video output, so you have to replicate it. Now, don't go ripping these off your boards, because I've actually come up with a way to modify the RF modulator while it's still installed on the C64 that will fix up the video quality and make it as good as I showed in this video when I had that bypass board. So watch for part two, where I'll show you how to do that yourself, and that will apply to the PAL and the NTSC version of the RF modulator used on this particular board revision, and also the older KU boards that were only available in Europe. All right, and then we have the different VIC chips. You saw I tried all the different ones. It seems that they're all basically the same, at least in the NTSC world, except for the R56A, which has that slightly weird color rendition compared to the later ones. So I would personally avoid that one, especially if you're gonna do the sharpness mod on your 64, which will bring out all those bad lines and color fringing that that chip has. And then you have the LumaFix. I built one of those up and I just couldn't get it to work well, as I mentioned earlier in the video. If you have different experiences about that, I'd love to hear it, but personally, I wouldn't spend any money buying one of those because I just feel that the improvement is so minimal or basically non-existent at all, so why even bother? If someone's gonna give you one for free, then sure, go ahead and try it out. But don't spend your hard-earned money on the LumaFix. I just don't think it's a good way to spend your cash. And then there's just one more thing I'd like to talk about, and you may notice when you hook up a 64 to a modern screen, like I have it hooked up to this monitor behind me through the RetroTink 2X, you'll notice sometimes when you turn it on that there's a bar that runs along the left side of the picture, especially noticeable when you have a black screen or a dark screen. Now, that is not a fault. That is something that all Commodore 64s do, at least the NTSC versions. And on a CRT, you just never noticed it when back in the day before we had LCDs, because that would be off the edge of the screen and hidden. But on an LCD like this, especially a 16 by nine one, it shows you the entire picture all the way up to the very edges, so that white line, which may sometimes be green or look a little bit different, is very apparent. 
So if you see that on yours, don't worry, there is nothing wrong with your VIC-2 chip. That is absolutely normal. All right, and that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate a thumbs up, but you know what to do if you didn't, hit that thumbs down button. Subscribe for more videos. There'll be lots more in the future. Hit that bell icon if you wanna be notified about me releasing new ones. And of course, put your comments and your suggestions down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.